let me ask you a question. You find yourself getting pissed off a lot? Like, do people get on your last nerve all of the time? Little things like road rage. You get a lot of road rage. You always find yourself kind of shaking your head and gritting your teeth because of the stupid shit that people do. I'm pissing you off right now. I'm just asking a question. Ain't nobody scared of you, fam. Don't threaten me. Don't, hey. Anger is perhaps the most commonly expressed emotion, and it's also one of the most dangerous. In this video, I'm gonna to try to take a deep dive into this secondary emotion to explain how dysfunctional anger can eat away at your cardiovascular system and hijack your nervous system. Yeah, I know, I know. We were researching this, it was surprising me too. No, I know I joke around a lot, but seriously, do you think you have a problem with anger? And before you answer that question, please understand that there is a difference between being angry and getting angry. A huge difference. See, everybody gets angry from time to time. That's perfectly normal. But do you find that you are always angry, always pissed off? Do other people often tell you that you seem mad? Like when you are having the best day of your life, are people like, you I right, don't? Everything okay? No, no, just you, you, you don't seem normal. Or might you feel like you just have too much anger bubbling up and radiating from within you? If you answered yes to any of those questions, you need to pay attention to this video and open your eyes to what I'm telling you. Damn! What up, everybody? Welcome to another episode of Advice from a Jackass. Today, we're going to be talking about chronic anger and not only how it can affect your psychological health, but how it can actually tear down your physical health. We have got a lot of content to cover as well as two case studies, and I'm going to be going pretty fast. So feel free to pause, rewind, whatever you need to do. We all know how nasty anger can feel, but what is it exactly? Well, anger is one of the basic human emotions that is as fundamental to humans as happiness, sadness, anxiety, and disgust. And like any emotional state, its intensity varies. With anger, it can go from like kind of mild and ticked off to fury and rage where you find yourself chasing somebody on the freeway and taking the same exits they take, making the same turns they take. It's tricky because anger cannot be attributed to a single reason. It can be a consequence of fear or a response to a perceived threat, imaginary or real, or it could just be a stress reaction that usually follows frustration. I have a person in my life who's always coming at me with snide remarks because I am not a holy roller, because of who I choose to love, because of the success I have in the industry that I'm in, so forth and so on. And I used to eventually get angry from it and then I would respond in anger. I don't know if this makes sense to you, but I kind of get tired of getting angry. So when I really started assessing how I was feeling, what I realized was that these snide remarks were actually hurting my feelings. They weren't making me angry, they were making me sad. And just by owning up to that, I was no longer angered by the snide remarks because I realized I wasn't actually angry. I was hurt. My anger was merely a secondary emotion. I'm blessed. I'm blessed because I got to live in poor communities in what we consider urban America, the hood, and I got to live in poor communities in what we consider trail apart, right? And in all of those environments, Folks are just walking around angry all day, just looking for someone to take their frustration out on. And that got me to wondering, because if anger is a secondary emotion, what is the primary emotion resulting in so many angry people? Hurt, frustration, a perceived threat, stress reaction? I'm asking genuinely, so please share your ideas, your insight in the comments. So what are the physical and psychological effects of anger? Remember how I mentioned anger can be a result of fear? Well, as a result of that, anger is inevitably linked to your fight or flight response. Whoa, 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 don't touch. Don't, don't pause it yet. Don't pause it yet because it's about to get interesting. During that fight or flight response, your adrenal gland floods your body with stress hormones such as adrenaline and cortisol. In preparation for physical exertion, your brain shuttles blood towards the muscles. You start experiencing this increase in heart rate, blood pressure, and respiration. Your body temperature rises and sometimes you'll find beads of sweat beginning to form on your skin. And anger's effects extend well beyond physiological changes. Due to the increase in respiration rate, extra oxygen is sent to the brain. And you know what that means, right? You get the helium voice because you got all the air in your head. No, seriously, it means enhanced mental focus and alertness. And don't get it twisted, it can be healthy to feel anger sometimes. The ancient reaction of anger has evolved. For instance, anger can be motivational, it can help in goal attainment. Anger mobilizes people into action and it can help get things done. Think back to the last time you were pissed off. Did you feel this exhilarating rush of adrenaline? That's what anger can be, a source of energy. It can help us overcome obstacles more vigorously, it can help us endure more failures to ultimately reach our desired goal. And in case you were wondering, anger originates from the amygdala, which is a part of the brain used for emotional processing. Your amygdala then sends a signal to the hypothalamus, and that leads to an activation of your body's sympathetic nerve system, which turns 
hands on the previously mentioned fight or flight bodily response. Listen, if this is sounding a bit too complicated for you, you ain't got time for all of this. I got this whole thing written out and formatted with graphics and everything. And all you gotta do is follow me at the pep and I can send it to you from there. But back to my original question. How often do you experience anger? Why is this question important? Anger is neither good nor bad, but experiencing it too frequently can mess you up. Chronic anger keeps your sympathetic nervous system activated. Just like a motor idling, too high for too long. And persistent surges and stress hormones can damage blood vessels and arteries. It'll increase your blood pressure and it'll increase the risk for heart attacks and strokes. But check this out. Research also indicates that elevated stress hormones inadvertently contribute to fat tissue and weight gain. And as you probably already know, obesity is a crucial risk factor for other chronic health disorders such as diabetes. And in addition to the physical harm that it can do to you, it can also do mental harm to you, such as increasing your anxiety, insomnia, depression, brain fog, and in more severe cases, which I've personally witnessed, chronic anger can lead to self-harming behaviors, including suicide. Researchers hypothesized that we were given this anger emotion to get ourselves out of like threatening situations, that kind of thing, right? But now it's just kind of turned into like sitting at your desk at work or just being pissed off at school, not being able to process your emotions or just going postal on your coworkers because they ate the last donut while you were on the phone, so you didn't get one. So why am I even talking about this? I'm talking about this because I grew up in poverty and I lost an uncle who was 50 years old to stomach cancer. I lost another uncle who had an aneurysm at 56 and I lost my father at the age of 63 to pancreatic cancer. And you know what they all had in common? A lot of unresolved family issues. And I lived in a community where brothers were dying at 35, 40, 45 years old. And you know what they all had in common? A lot of anger and unresolved issues. I wholeheartedly believe. Now, let me preface again, this is advice from a jackass, okay? But I wholeheartedly believe that part of the reason that some of us die so young is because of all of the stuff that we internalize as a people, the way that we are regarded, the injustices that we have to face because of the fact that we're poor or because of the fact that we grew up in harsh communities. A lot of people don't realize this, but right here in the United States of America, there are all of these third world pockets all over the place that don't get frequent sanitation, that don't have working sewage, the community doesn't get clean water. There's all kinds of stuff. And in these communities, people can be a lot more desperate. And it's very difficult to relate to if you are living off in your little bubble. And these are neglected communities. There's a whole history behind this on how it actually occurred. I will spare you all of that drama. I will just say that certain communities were built for a certain amount of people. But because of poverty, people allowed more people to live with them. And as a result of that, a community that was built to service maybe a thousand people ended up having to service 4,000 people. There are communities right here in California where the fire department will not certify these communities as residential communities because if there were to be a fire, there's not enough water coming into that community to allow the fire department to put out the fire. So they cannot sign off on, yes, you can build this into a residential community. And guess what? They build in the communities anyway. And in these underserved communities, there is a major lack of resources, including education. And due to that, there are people people walking around who are not only feeling neglected, not only feeling as though they don't matter, but they're also not learning how to process this feeling of neglect. They're not learning how to process this hurt. They're not learning how to communicate this hurt. And as a result of that, they are developing conditions of chronic anger. And guess what? It doesn't just have to be that. It could be anything. Maybe you experienced gross injustice throughout your childhood, or maybe you just grew up in an angry family, or maybe you are conditioned to unhealthy relationships. All of these things can result in chronic anger, but we kind of overlook it and behave as though we can just turn it off or turn it on. Turn it on and turn it off. That's not how it works. And so my goal here is I'm hoping that by showing you the physical effects of chronic anger, it may help all of us prioritize the need to understand the root of our anger and to work towards resolving it. It's killing us. It's literally killing us. I've got two case studies in front of me, one with 381 participants in Montreal. They were trying to figure out the relationship between anger and general anxiety disorder, GAD. This is a mental disorder characterized by persistent and excessive worrying that interferes with a person's day-to-day -day life. So to do the study, they had the subjects answer a series of questions. You know what the researchers found? Anger exacerbates the symptoms of GAD. Not only were higher levels of anger found in people diagnosed with generalized anxiety disorder, but hostility also contributed significantly to the severe of GAD symptoms. 
symptoms. There's another study from Harvard Medical School, 3,886 participants, and they were trying to explore the association between anger outbursts and heart attacks. Their conclusion was that the risk of heart attack doubled only two hours after an outburst in anger. Imagine that, just when we think we could be getting some off our chest, we could actually be turning off our chest. Again, if you want a more comprehensive hard copy of this stuff written out and well formatted, all you got to do is go to petrequest.com and click the little box that says free download and I'll make sure to get it to you. But hopefully this has given you a better understanding of anger, its evolutionary purposes, its originations in the brain and body, and potential health dangers. And it's now time to ask yourself the tough question if you haven't already. Are you angry. If your conversations always turn into debates, you might be angry. If you usually see the worst in people, you might be pissed off. If you don't get along with your family, you have no close friends or never seem to get invited out, you might be a self-made millionaire. As humans, it's never easy to acknowledge that we are not perfect and that we make mistakes. But if you are not as happy as you think you'd like to be, if you are hurting the ones you love, and if you are feeling as though it's always you against the world, you might want to consider counseling to see how you can cope with your anger. There is nothing shameful about asking for a little help. There's nothing shameful about counseling. There's nothing shameful about therapy. Do not let your anger kill you. Do not let what is imposed upon you by society determine your lifespan. I am speaking from experience. Anger is crippling physically and mentally. I remember when I was going through my divorce, anger literally paralyzed me. Like literally, I couldn't get myself out of my own bathtub. Like I was, my, I, I, could, I couldn't do it. The amount of stress hormones that I was pumping into my body pretty much paralyzed me. That was a wake up call, yo. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to stay on topic today, but I do have a bonus for you. It is a chronic anger checklist that we put together. It's nothing fancy, just a little PDF that you can download onto your phone and then you can check all the symptoms that apply to you to help you get a better understanding if you might be angry, chronically angry, because we all get angry, but are we always angry? That's the question. All right, that concludes another episode of Advice from a Jackass. My name is Romney Malco. If you like this kind of content, please follow me at The Pep, and you can do so by going to petrequest.com. If you're interested in any of the downloads that I mentioned throughout this video, you can just click that little box that says free download, and we'll send it all to you. Thank you once again. My name is Romney Malco. Hopefully, I see you at petrequest.com. I'm out.